as you have studied what is titration and how it is carried out, you would also need to know what are the types of acid-base titration that we have. You will be learning three types of acid-base titration. Titration between a strong acid and a strong base. The titration between a weak acid and a strong base. And a titration between a strong acid and a weak base. Let us see an example of a titration between a strong acid and a strong base. We will use the example of hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. Here you will learn how to sketch and interpret a titration curve and also you will learn how to choose an indicator for the titration. Here you see is a titration curve where it shows how the pH of the analyte which is in your flask changes as the volume of titrant is added from the burette. At the beginning of the titration, before the addition of sodium hydroxide, the pH of the solution in the flask is the pH of HCl or showed here 2. As the acid solution is titrated, the neutralization starts to occur and the concentration of the acid gradually decreases and the pH increases. There is still excess of HCl in the flask as the neutralization process is not completed. The addition of NaOH is continued. As the equivalent point is reached, there is no excess of either acid or base. So the pH of the solution is 7. As you studied before, at equivalent point, the amounts of acid and base present have exactly neutralized each other. And also, at equivalent point, as the acid and base has been neutralized, only salt and water is present. As you have studied in salt hydrolysis, the pH of a salt form between the titration of a strong acid and strong base is neutral. Therefore, the pH is 7. At any point after the equivalence point, we will have an excess of sodium hydroxide as all the hydrochloric acid have been neutralized and the pH will be basic. You will notice a steep part in the titration curve. The steep part in the titration curve is called the end point pH range for a titration between the strong acid and strong base, the end point pH range is 3 to 11. At the end point pH range lies the pH of the equivalent point, which is 7. And also, at the end point pH range is where the indicator will change its color. Therefore, when you choose an indicator for the titration, you will have to choose an indicator with a pH range that lies within the end point pH range. If you notice in this table, all the indicators except the mole blue falls within the endpoint pH range 
of 3 to 11. Therefore, for a titration between a strong acid and a strong base, any indicator can be used except the mole blue. So this is how you would sketch and interpret a titration curve and choose a suitable indicator for the titration between a strong acid and a strong base. Here, we will study the titration between a weak acid and a strong base. We will use the example of ethanoic acid, a weak acid, and sodium hydroxide, a strong base. We are going to study how to sketch and interpret a titration curve and also how to choose an indicator for the titration between a weak acid and a strong base. As you can see here, this is a titration curve which shows the variation of the pH of the analyte solution in the flask as the volume of titrant is added from the burette. At the beginning of the titration, before the addition of sodium hydroxide, the pH of the solution in the flask is the pH of ethanoic acid, or showed here as 3. As the acid solution is titrated, neutralization starts to occur and the concentration of acid gradually decreases and the pH increases. There is still excess of ethanoic acid in the flask as the neutralization process is not completed. The addition of sodium hydroxide is continued. As the equivalent point is reached, there is no excess of either acid or base present. As at equivalent point, amounts of acid and base present have exactly neutralized each other. At equivalent point here, only salt and water is present. As you have studied in salt hydrolysis previously, the pH of a salt form between the titration of a weak acid and a strong base will be basic with pH more than 7. Therefore, at equivalent point here, the pH will be more than 7. At any point after the equivalent point, we will have an excess of sodium hydroxide as all the ethanoic acid have been neutralized and the pH will be basic. You will notice a steep part in the titration curve here. The steep part here represents the end point pH range which is between 7 to 11. In the endpoint pH range between 7 to 11 lies the equivalent point with pH more than 7. And also within the endpoint pH range of 7 to 11, the indicator will change color. Therefore, in order to choose an indicator for the titration between a weak acid and strong base, the pH range of the indicator should fall within the endpoint pH range of 7 to 11. From the table here, it can be seen that there are two indicators that have the pH range that lie within the range of 7 to 11. Therefore, the suitable indicators that can be used is phenolphthalein and crystal red. This is how you will sketch and interpret a titration curve and also choose an indicator 
for the titration between a weak acid and a strong base. Let us study the titration between a strong acid and a weak base. Here we will use the example of hydrochloric acid, a strong acid, and ammonia, a weak base. We are going to learn how to sketch and interpret a titration curve and also to choose a suitable indicator for the titration between a strong acid and a weak base. The titration curve here shows the variation of the analyte solution from the flask as the volume of titran is added from the burette. At the beginning of the titration, before the addition of ammonia, the pH of the solution in the flask is the pH of hydrochloric acid or shown here as 2. As the acid solution is titrated, neutralization starts to occur and the concentration of acid gradually decreases and the pH increases. There is still excess of hydrochloric acid in the flask as the neutralization process is not completed. The addition of ammonia is continued. As the equivalent point is reached, there is no excess of either acid or base present. As at equivalent point, amounts of acid and base present have exactly neutralized each other and only salt and water is present. As you have studied previously in salt hydrolysis, the pH of a salt form between the titration of a strong acid and a weak base will be acidic with pH less than 7. Therefore, at the equivalent point here, the pH will be less than 7. At any point after the equivalence point, we will have an excess of ammonia as all the hydrochloric acid have been neutralized and the pH will be basic. You will notice a steep part in the titration curve. The steep part is the endpoint pH range, which is between 3 to 7. Along the endpoint pH range of 3 to 7 lies the equivalent point, which is less than 7. And also, within the endpoint pH range of 3 to 7, the indicator will change color. So, in order to choose a suitable indicator, the pH range of the indicator must fall within the range of the endpoint here, which is 3 to 7. From the table, you can see that there are four indicators that have pH range that fall between 3 to 7. And so, there are four indicators that can be used for the titration between a strong acid and a weak base, which is bromo, phenol blue, methyl orange, methyl red, and chlorophenol blue. This is how you would sketch and interpret a titration curve and also choose an indicator for the titration between a strong acid and a weak base.